I said to you yesterday, there were some pretty good-looking belts, and uh, there <laughs> certainly are. Um, I guess just just off the top, so just 12 hours or so removed. Um, how, how are you feeling right now? Does it still feel real? Top of the world. There's no um, there's only so many words in the dictionary, aren't there? So yeah, yeah. it's not something that you can really put into words. It's just that, I don't know. That sounds cliché, but it's so true. It's just 13 years of hard work all coming to try and get to the yeah. WWE, try to get to the top. This is a WWE title, side plates don't lie, best feeling in the world. Um, I guess, um, what next is it for you guys? Um, are there any tag teams you've got your eye on in um, NXT UK or, or in NXT UK? Yeah, so um, one thing we said to ourselves today was, you know, basking in the glory, taking it all in. Uh, we, we set a standard yesterday. Um, but, the two questions we ask ourselves is what's next and two and uh, two is who's next. Uh, we've got our eyes on a few people. Um, Should we say they've got their eyes on us? Mm. Yeah. We're at the top now. We're at the top. They have to look at us, not the other way around. So our job now is making sure that these are the top titles anywhere around the world. So WWE have multiple brands. Those brands have tag team titles. Let's see if they can create the same body of work that we're willing to create. In terms of the um, reaction you got last night um, from the opening match, um, is, it, is it like you like right, where the opener we're going to set out and we're going to steal the show, and then you hear the crowd just, just minutes into the show already exploding? Um, how does that make you feel? It's it's amazing. Do you know, NXT UK is a, a real special thing. British wrestling in itself is so unique when compared to the Japanese style or the Lucha Libre style of Mexico. British wrestling is unique and so we always knew our show would be unique. But one of the other things that factors in and that makes NXT UK so different from everything else is the audience. <coughs> it's the energy that they bring because when they throw that energy at us, they th we throw it right back and in different ways. It helps that Mustache Mountain are one of the most popular tag teams in the world and that we're probably one of the least popular tag teams in the world because <laughs> what that leads to is they're throwing such positive energy at Mustache Mountain and you can see it in their face and see it in the body that they're giving it back and then on the flip side they're holding up signs and shouting abuse at us but we just bottle that up, channel that into ourselves, give him back to them and leave Trent Seven in the state that he was in because of it. <laughs> that's their fault, you know what I mean? that's on their head, not ours. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, hey guys, first of all it's a great release, the belts look great when you got revealed. Um, I want to come to you first, Zach. obviously the chance that you get at these shows are just tremendous, like, you know, people taking their shoes off, they hate you and all that kind of stuff, very football-esque, and I just want to, was there a point in your career where you kind of went, I either need to just commit to, like, letting these people do this, or am I going to be like, oh, do I want, do I want it to go this way? Because there must be a little bit of confliction at the beginning, going, you know, how far would chance go, but it's now got to a point where just, you are hated. Um, it's not something I ever thought I'd be proud of. And if you would have asked me years ago, if one day everyone hates you, how will you feel? <laughs> Don't think my answer would have been proud. <laughs> um, but this is this is such a unique job, such a unique business that it's hard to. It's hard to make any sort of comparisons, you know, I don't think you'll find a football player a football player who loves the fact that he's hated, but it makes all of our matches unique and it makes them special, so I wouldn't change it for the world. And, you know, it's funny because we talked to Pete on Friday and today, and he talked about the NXT UK brand and growing it, um, and it kind of struck me last night when we were watching the match, the so Mustache Mountain, you guys are having this match, everybody at various points thinks each of you are going to win, it goes back and forth and back and forth, but Mustache Mountain went to the US to help grow NXT UK. And had <laughs> matches over there. Now, for you guys, I guess there may be as party that if you guys are going to go NXT UK, it's not just about having matches in NXT UK, it's maybe going to NXT in the US, going to different places in WWE, and sort of showing people why they should be watching this show. So, with that in mind, is that something that's a goal of yours? And are, are there any other kind of teams in other parts of WWE that you look at and kind of go, give us 20 minutes in the ring with them and we'll show you why you should oh, watch definitely. Like, our job now is to make these titles the most prestigious anywhere and to make our division the most prestigious. We want people on the other brands asking for a move. They want to come here because they know how important these titles are. And that's on us. We're the first champion to be going through them. We've got off on the right foot, I feel, with the match that we had yesterday. Uh, Takeover Blackpool was trending all around the world, number one trend. So people were watching, and the NXT roster will have been watching, and the SmackDown and the Raw roster will have been watching. And I just dare any critic anywhere around the world to take our match and hold it up against any one of theirs, and you're going to see that we are everything that we've been saying that we are. And as far as other tag teams that we want to wrestle, you could stick a blindfold on and 
spin around backstage at WWE and regardless of where you take that blindfold off, you're going to see top talent. WWE is the biggest wrestling company in the world. There's a reason why we wanted to be here so passionately because they have the pick of the best talent in the world. You can look at the SmackDown roster, the Raw roster, Sheamus and Cesaro, the Usos, the New Day, uh, the Undisputed <coughs> Era, Danny Bear, Johnny Lawkins. We just, we could just go on and on and on of world-class talents. We want them all to come. I don't want to go to them, I want them to come to us because this isn't the division to be in. And just quickly, for you, you know, obviously when the Royal Albert Hall show happened last year, you, know, you were in a very prominent match there, and you weren't in as prominent a position at that point, and now we come to this show, and you walked out of it a, a tag team champion. That must be a pretty cool thing for you, a validation of your hard work. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, actually, two years ago, I debuted for WWE here uh, in the first ever UK tournament, and uh, it, didn't really go, it didn't really pan out the way I wanted it to then. I, I was out the first round. Um, but I knew then, at that point, it wasn't like, oh, well, you know, I guess not me. Uh, it wasn't anything like that. It was get back to work, get back to work. Right, okay, well, now some people know a little bit about James Drake, so let's start making a name, let's start traveling the world. Um, and then in the midst of all that, that's when uh, the tag team, Zach and me, just started building, 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 you know, going to China, Hong Kong, uh, all over Europe, America last year. Um, and then when the opportunity rose last summer in Birmingham uh, for me and Zach to you know, start tag teaming in the WWE, it was a no brainer. It really wasn't. Because we, we, we both knew as soon as we got this opportunity together, the sky that you have to And I've been saying for years now, telling everyone that'll listen. Yeah, it's soon to be recognised as number one, but there's more than one way to get recognised. So I was chasing Pete Dunne and I was hot on his heels, but. This was the opportunity to become the first ever tag team champions, not the third UK champion. Don't get me wrong, that's still a goal and that's still in the back of my head, but this is straight into the history books. No one can ever take that away from us now. So when they announce this tournament and they say anyone who wants to go after the titles, you find yourself a partner. You've known each other for 13 years. And you say there that um, maybe James wasn't quite in such a prominent role at that time. That's just situational because I've known him his whole life and I've known what everyone was tweeting about yesterday. So they're going, oh, I didn't know Gene Drake could do that. Oh, that's the most impressive 450 I've ever seen. I didn't know he could do that. I did. That's why I got him to do it. <laughs> did I get to just sit on the floor, <laughs> hold someone down. Boom, nice one, James. I'll be um, I've known it for years, so this is a uh, validation for us both. Well, they always say, sort of like in comic books, like Superman needed Lex Luthor and such. And I thought the last night's match for Trent's moment showed the amazing relationship that you guys have got with Trent and Thailand. So, how important was that sort of to have that sort of relationship and sort of be able to build up that match and sort of have you know, the quality of match for those two individuals and sort of what they, they brought the best out of you and I think you brought the best out of them as well. And it was a phenomenal spectacle. Yeah, we, uh, we were asked this, a similar question earlier and basically like, wrestling is so much more than two lads grappling throwing kicks and throwing punches it's so much more than that anyone that likes wrestling or appreciates <coughs> wrestling already knows that you know, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir um, but like Hogan needed Andre Rock needed Austin so that's all this is it's just when when everything's right when all the stars align and you've got a great audience a great set and the stakes are high the build being right you've got a, a strong team like ourselves who the crowd hate and you've got a strong team like Mustache Mountain who the crowd love that's when wrestling really at its best and the responses that we've had have just reflected that. Everyone's on the moon, including ourselves. And it's an exciting time because obviously we saw on Friday with the PC Centre. How do you think that's going to sort of help develop the brand further, sort of going forward with the facilities oh, that are now available? Yeah, so um, it's, it's, you know, when we, when we were training, you know, 13 years ago, we never had, never even thought about having a, a space such as that. You know, we've got two state-of-the-art degree rings. We've got state-of-the-art strength and conditioning uh, equipment with the, probably the best strength and conditioning coach in the world, Sean Hayes. Uh, we're getting tutored, uh, tutored, tutored by um, Matt Bloom, uh, Robbie Brookside, Johnny Moss, <laughs> Sean Michaels. Uh, you, honestly, you'd have, to, you'd have to find it hard to, to fail in such an environment. Um, put it this way, we were just watching a match with Sean last week, 30 minutes in, just way, the way he thinks, just getting that 
Uh, you just completely flooded. You can't, uh, you can't put it on the novice that they can pass on. You know, it just the progression has accelerated so fast since we've started working with the WWE. Um, because of the brains that have already done it all, they can pass it on so so willingly and so easily. And if you would have told us when we started 13 years ago, do you think you'll be wrestling for the WWE one day? We probably just said yes because <laughs> we're because we're confident. We would have said yes. Definitely, I will wrestle for the WWE. That's that's why we've got here. But if you would have said, "Will you wrestle for the WWE and will you be sat in a UK performance center on a Wednesday morning at nine o'clock, having a Tesco meal deal and watching the matches with Shawn Michaels?" I would have said, "No. What are you on about? <laughs> Not a chance. It's such a strange time to be alive." But what an exciting time, no better time. Well, one of the guys said one of the cool things from Friday was talking to everyone and everyone's <coughs> telling story how they got into it because there was no clear path 15 years ago and such. And so it's such, clearly such an exciting time, not just for you guys as the current generation, but there's now a clear route for the next generation and the people you're inspiring from last night. So you've got to say it's a great, great time ahead for British I just, wrestling. I just hope that the next generation don't take it for granted because I do feel that's what's made the UK scene so special right now. Uh, in the US there is a clear route, so there will be athletes who get into the job for money. There will be athletes who get into the job because they can see that clear route and they can think, I can be the star, I can earn this, I can do that. But in the UK there was no clear route, so the current generation that are on this brand, you know that the only reason why we're doing this is because we love doing it. Because you know that, it's a fact, because when we got into it, there was nowhere for us to go. So we were obviously only doing it because we loved it. And through that actual you know, passion that everyone applied to wrestling, we spawned NXT UK, it was, it was our generation. We forced WWE's hand, WWE being the company that they are, you know. They, they don't shy away from anything like that. They grabbed it, they harnessed it. They haven't changed us, they haven't tried to take over us, they haven't tried to you know, stop us or hinder us in any sort of way. All they've done is just throw a load of logs on the fire and make this into something even more special than it already was. Thank you so much. Um, <coughs> can I get one last one in? The absolute last yeah. thing. Right, thanks. Um, I just want to know what are your um, favourite slash least favourite chants directed at yourselves? Raspberries. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like the visual of the shoes off, it makes me feel like a rock star, but whenever I show it to my dad, I just mute it. And when he says, what are they doing there? I'm like, oh, they're just cheering for me. They just look at them all, on their feet, hands in the air, he thinks I'm the coolest guy in the world. Um, it's a love-hate. The crowd loves to hate us, I've been tweeted that a lot, I've been told that a lot. We love to hate you. Oh, we love to hate them. I hate them, but they're such a big part of the show and they're one of the things that makes the show so special. So. I hope they don't change because we're not going to be there. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Thank guys. You.